My name is Charles. I'm 55 years old. I'm from Texas, although I currently uh, work on an overseas assignment uh, for a U.S. company. Uh, I grew up in a Republican, a very conservative household. I've voted Republican my entire life. Uh, I've campaigned for Republicans. I campaigned for Jack Kemp several years back. Um, and the last few years uh, for me, uh, as I uh, expected is for, for several uh, lifelong Republicans, has been a struggle. Um, as I've watched the party slip into sort of a form that I find uh, largely unrecognizable. Um, and where I stand right now and how I reconcile my own sort of political leanings with the decisions we get to make as voters is really to look at the leader that we've elected and to assess sort of positive attributes and negative attributes. Um, because I think for all of us, we have a definition in our mind of, of uh, how we how we measure our leaders and what we expect of them. Um, in terms of positive qualities, you know, I believe it's important to look for accountability and responsibility for steadiness and prudence, especially in the middle of a crisis like we've been going through. Um, I believe it's important to uh, look for honesty uh, and, and a certain uh, moral compass, if you will. I think even more politically uh, to look for and kind of way at those, those uh, office holders, if you will, um, against the tenets of conservatism that I find important, like limited government and, and fiscal discipline. Uh, and I find this administration and Donald Trump lacking on all of those points, uh, not just based on social media uh, uh, influencing, but, but really on the, the, based on the words and the actions and the decisions that I've seen with my own eyes. Um, but then when we look at active negative attributes, um, I've seen in Donald Trump uh, impulsiveness and vindictiveness, uh, childishness, uh, um, nepotistic sort of corrupt behaviors on many, many levels. But for me, the most important negative attribute I've seen coming out of this administration over the last few years, three and a half years, is this uh, divisiveness that seems to permeate our um, our culture right now. And, and divisiveness always existed, but we've elected someone who actively fans the flames of divisiveness and tribalism and us versus them to the point that um, today it feels you're, you're um, either a Trump supporter or you're a liberal. And if you are a Trump supporter, you must be a racist and a bigot. And that feels like the world we have uh, uh, put ourselves into. We've allowed ourselves to be sucked into and led actively by this guy. And for that reason, I cannot, I cannot support voting for Donald Trump. I, uh, I believe the decision that we have to make as individuals and that we have the opportunity to make still in this country is bigger than tribalism. It's bigger than Republican and Democrat. It's bigger than liberal and conservative. Uh, and we should, we should go in that voting booth and make a decision about who we believe represents the best of us. And maybe that makes me naive, and I accept that. But it's an opportunity we still have, which I'm grateful for, and I'll use that opportunity to vote for someone who I believe will do the least amount of damage, who I believe will slow the decay rather than speed it up, and I will not be voting for Donald Trump.